Hello, my name is Travis Thurston, and my wife Jenny and I are the co-race directors for the Crazy Pink Race 5K, which is a volunteer-run event to help raise money for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation in finding a cure for type 1 diabetes. Our son Chris here, he's four years old, and he was diagnosed with type 1 when he was two and a half, and he's our inspiration for the race. We had our first race last year in June, and our second is going to be this year in 2012 in July. And I want to share a few tips about what we did to plan, implement, and create the Crazy Pink Race 5K race to help others through Team JDRF to be able to start their own events and continue to raise money for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. First thing you want to do, and I'm going to be following a list here that's provided on active.com on an article called How to Organize Your First Race, is you are going to choose your event, your location, and your date. These are very important to get put in place very quickly because once they are in place, you can go ahead and start making uh, the rest of your plans, and you can register your race here with. Team JDRF on their website, jdrfevents.donordrive.com. We're here on community events. If you want to register your race, you will first click on start a community event and go to get started. Since our event already exists, we'll go to find your event. Our event's in Idaho, and it's the Crazy Pancreas 5K. Team JDRF provides some really great resources here. Uh, all the information about our race is listed. They provide options for registering. You can donate to the event here and you can use social media to share. However, what we decided to do with our race is utilize a resource. This is our blog. Well, we utilize a resource called runnercard.com. They're a great company, very professional business. Uh, they set up a page for participants to come and register online. Very easy, just a few clicks, type in your information and they're registered. They take care of our timing services as well. So for example, during the race, they have this big clock display that helps uh, the runner see what time they're at and a big finishing banner. And when the athletes finish, they also receive a runner card which has all the vital information from the race that uh, participants can take home with them. They also provide online listings of race results. So once the participants go home, um, they can go to our website or they can link through RunnerCard and they can look up the results for the race. It's even listed by age division here. It's a really great resource, really adds to your event. Um, to get started, we made up a proposal and we took it to the Income City Council, since that is where we're holding our race, and we presented all of our information, our purpose, we showed them what our proposed running routes would be, uh, and I just did this on Google Maps, pretty easy. Uh, again, this talks about uh, traffic control, which we're going to be using local law enforcement. We'll also have staffing at our aid stations with EMTs on hand. Uh, just a very basic overview of our race that we presented to City Council for approval, which they did. Once it was approved by them and by Team JDRF and our local chapter, we were able to start publicizing. Uh, we put out banners that look similar to this. We created a Facebook page where people can like the page and we can also post information about other events that help with JDRF and also other events that are supporters of the Crazy Pancreas 5K. We can also like pages of our community sponsors like Five Guys, Pizza Pie Cafe, and Larson Dental. It is very vital to get a, a base of sponsors, community sponsors. This year our title sponsors are Star 98.5 uh, FM, Portneuf Medical Center, Patelco Credit Union, and uh, Larson Dental is one of our gold sponsors. Here on our website we have them all listed. 
And then we'll also be putting these logos on the back of our race day t-shirts. The race t-shirt is a really great way uh, to get people involved. Every runner wants to make sure they get the best race t-shirt. So for example, you can see the shirt here in this picture. This is Chris finishing the half mile kids race wearing his youth size shirt. Uh, we also have bib numbers that we give to all of our participants at the race. As far as pricing goes for the races, depends on the event and depends how quickly the participant signs up and whether or not they're getting a race t-shirt. So we have a one mile walk, a half mile kids race, a 5k and a 10k. So depending on the race and if you have a shirt or no shirt and then as we get closer to the cutoff prices start to go up. This will help uh, participants want to register early which will give you a better idea of how many awards you're going to be purchasing uh, how many t-shirts you need to order things like that uh, however the reality of it is is most runners register late which is okay because they're going to be paying a higher fee and that will just go into your funds you want to have a nice budget set up and make sure that you're only spending about 30 percent or less of your budget on administrative costs and so 70 percent or more of that can actually go to your local JDRF chapter now also on our website we have a page dedicated to all of the race info it's really good to put have a page like this that puts all of the information about your race all of the vital information right in one spot so we have all of our times the prices talk about aid stations age division winners uh, we also have things where we follow uh, NCAA rules so that current and future NCAA athletes can participate in the race and not be in violation of rules. This encourages high school runners and even college athletes to come and participate. Uh, like I said with timing we have runner card helping us out and then we piggyback off of the income 4th of July celebration. Uh, by doing that we're able to have an entry in the parade which gives a lot of exposure right there in the city of income uh, just a few days before our race to help encourage a, a few more people to come register. And then during that day, while there's the celebration in the park, we have a booth set up where uh, people who have already registered can come and pick up their packets. You wanna make sure that you have a nice race packet put together that has you know, discount coupons to places where, who are sponsoring you, uh, little goodies like that. You'll have your the race bib and the t-shirt if they ordered one all in one little packet to give to the runners. Uh, as far as sponsors again, also make sure you get to these guys early on in the year in January and February when they have a new budget for donating to work with. Another big thing you need to work with is having volunteers. Volunteers are essential. Uh, this is a sample form that I created to show interest that volunteers can send to us. You're going to be needing volunteers to help along with law enforcement for traffic control. You'll need volunteers for parking, aid stations, at the finish line, helping out with awards, helping out with food at the end of the race, all sorts of things. So the more volunteers you can get the better. And to entice them to come volunteer, you're going to want to give them uh, a free t-shirt, or offer a free lunch after the race provided by one of your sponsors. Try to use your sponsors as much as you can to donate and use donations as much as you can rather than spending money on things. This will really help your race uh, and really maximize the amount of money you can, you can raise. Now back to our list over here we have our budget, our sponsors, we've been promoting the race on social media. Day of the race uh, checklist. I encourage you to check out this website. They have some really great information making sure everything runs smoothly. And again, if you can get a company like Runner Card to handle timing services, that really takes a lot of, a lot of stress off of you as the race director. And they provide that service for a relatively low cost. 
Well, I believe that's all the information I wanted to share with you for now, but if you need to contact us, or if you'd like to contact us, you can email at idahocrazypancreas5k at gmail.com. I'd be happy to share with you any of the resources that we have. You can contact your local JDRF chapter, and they're always happy to help. And that's it.